hello viewers you are welcome to this video wow it is time for us to now consider something very important about um, laplace transform so in this video we are going to consider two major conditions okay don't let me say it like that let me just call it necessary and sufficient conditions so but they're actually two in numbers so we are going to consider them and um, i'll show you that um, at the end of this video You'll be able to explain some conditions with the Laplace transform of some functions you know there is always this condition that we don't normally talk about but at the end of this video you'll be able to explain the condition under which the Laplace transform of the function can exist so let's start the journey the first thing we're going to consider is called removable discontinuity you know these things happens to some functions now let's consider this function on the screen now yeah, we have the function g of x so we can see the function as it were so the point now is this is there anything like discontinuity here yes yes because if you look at this first function x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 you see that the function exists only when x is not equals to 1 now if that function exists when x is equals to 1 then look at the next part of the function g of x is not saying that when x equals to 1 the function is 2 so the problem now is this what is actually happening at x equals to 1 there are two things here because if you look at the first one when you put x equals to 1 in the first one you will see that the denominator will give is 0 which means that there is a problem there is a discontinuity at that let's look at it now x squared minus 1 divided by x minus 1 if you put 1, x equals to 1 in denominator, you have 1 minus 1, which is 0. And anything divided by 0 is what? It's undivided. So, which means that there's a point of discontinuities there. So, let's go ahead and check and plot the graph. Because we are asked to remark that is there anything like a removable discontinuity at x equals to 1? <laughs> and if so, we should explain why. Now, let's look at the graph now. Now, if you look at the graph now, you see that at exactly one there is a cross state there's a cross and that cross is telling us something that at this cross so we're able to get a function which is divine point at x equals to one we only get this one because we use two here but if we put one in the first one which is at one minus one you will get divided by zero which is undivine so this graph here is it has it shows us that it confirms the fact that g of x it has a removable discontinuity at x equals to 1. Or perhaps you can say that the function is undivine at x equals to 1. If you notice in the previous slide, I mentioned the fact that um, that particular function g of x there, the denominator is the major problem. Because the denominator at x equals to 1 will give us a serious problem which is undivine. So if you look at this function that we've just called this particular function that we just remark, notice that it has a point of discontinuity at x equals to 1. So what can we do about it? Let's look at the function again. We can factorize the, the numerator. You know, x squared minus 1. We can factorize it to get what you can see on the screen. Now, if you look at it, you see now that there is a component of the numerator that can cancel the denominator. So if that is the case, you see that x minus 1 will cancel x minus 1. So the next thing now is the fact that... Um, you can also clearly that um, when x is tending to 1, you know, perhaps when x is not equals to 1, we can now say that we can find the limit of that function g of x, which will give us 1 plus 1, which is equals to 2. So one thing we can now deduce from here is the fact that um, the function g of x, when exactly when x equals to 1 is 2, which gives us the limit to be equals to 2. So that is how to obtain the limit for that function, you know. We should not just look at it as the fact that that function it has a point of discontinuity as x equals to 1. We can actually find the limit. So the limit actually exists and the limit is equals to 2. But we should not forget the fact that uh, g of x, it has a hole at x equals to 1. Uh -huh. And that particular hole is because the denominator is 0. Because it's 0 divided by 0 which we can actually get from the expression x squared minus 1 over x minus 1. Uh -huh. So, but the fact is that since the limit exists and it matches 
the, the divine value for g of 1 equals to 2, then we can actually conclude that the function g of x, it has a point of discontinuity, and that point of discontinuity can be removed. It can actually be removed. So in summary now, you know, after considering that particular function g of x, we can see that um, it's possible to explicitly divine uh, the function g of x at x equals to 1 to give us 2, you know, and the function becomes continuous everywhere. So in this case, you know, we can actually say that the discontinuity is already removed because what g of 1 is correctly divined. In fact, if you now take a look back at the function, let's look at it again, you now see now that x squared minus 1 over x minus 1 is telling us that this function here, it's discontinuous at x equals to 1. But despite that, at x equals to 1, the same function g of x is still equals to 2. So this is a very good indication, indicator that uh, the point of discontinuity can be removed. So the function g of x, it has a removable discontinuity at x equals to 1. And the reason is because the original definition, it creates a hole. But the limit exists and the limit actually matches g of 1. So we can say that the discontinuity is removed by divining g of 1 to equals to the limit at x tends to 1, g of x equals to 2. Most importantly, the original definition of x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, it results in a whole at x equals to 1 due to division by 0. But however, the limit as x tends to 1 is 2, and the function is defined at x equals to 1 to match the limit. The discontinuity is removed by explicitly redefining g of 1 to be equals to 2 and making g of x to be continuous everywhere. So because of this, I can answer that the function, uh, despite the fact that it has a point of discontinuity, mm -hmm, but others, by the fact that um, that point of discontinuity can be removed, then we can answer that the function is actually continuous. So in summary now, we can say that a removable discontinuity occurs at a point s equals to c. Like in the previous example, like the example we've just finished now, the point is at s equals to 1, so c is 1. So we can now say that a removable discontinuity occurs at s equals to 1 if, number 1, the function is not divine at that point, C, at that point. As you can see in this example now, at s equals to 1, g of x is not divine. Aha. So the function is not divine or its value does not match the limit at x equals to 1. And at the same time, the limit as x tends to c, g of x exists and is finite. So we can say that such discontinuity can be removed by redivining g of c to match the limit. So this video here is telling us about the point as about the case of removable discontinuity that if you have a particular function and that function has a point of discontinuity, that discontinuity can be removed even only, no, sorry, let me say it again. That discontinuity can be removed at that point. If number one, the function is not defined or its value does not match the limit at x equals to c, that's number one. As in the case we've just finished now, we can realize that um, the g of x at x equals to one, mm -hmm, it, does, it does not exist. But that same function is equals to 2 when s equals to 1. So that gives us a better insight to the concept of discontinuity and how it can be removed and under, what, under which condition it can be removed. So thank you very much for watching this video. So let's proceed to the next one. Thank you. Catch you.